Previously on the Aruba switching story, we learned about the Edge Services platform and how Aruba switching fits in the unified infrastructure. We also were introduced to the video series and how Aruba switching will apply to a real world scenario across the switching portfolio with multiple demonstrations among the episodes of this video series. In this episode, we'll hear from Steve Bartlett and Kamal Takodra, who will be talking to us about Aruba Fabric Composer in the data center and how to provision the data center using AFC. Hey, Justin. Thanks for that. Well, let me introduce myself first. I'm Kamal Takodra, and I'm joined by Steve Bartlett. We're both technical marketing engineers in the switching area, and we're going to talk about Aruba Fabric Composer and about spinal leaf orchestration and then visibility into the network and integration with AFC. So I think Steve's got a diagram that we can show up next of what we're going to do. And in this diagram, uh, we're just focusing on the spine and leaf on the left and we have a facial recognition application uh, that's on this leaf too that you can see. So this is where we're going to be focusing uh, in on for this part of um, the segment. So Steve, um, we have this new facial recognition app that we are deploying that Justin mentioned earlier, but we're gonna need new DC resources to be ready for this workload, right? And I know we have a Aruba Fabric Composer. How can the Fabric Composer assist us today in accelerating and simplifying ser service delivery to the business in the data center? So really, Steve, what I'm asking you is tell us a bit more of how best we can support this delivery, delivery of this new app and solution using AFC. Yes, uh, certainly, Kamal. So as you can see in the diagram, this is what we'll be focusing on. Uh, we're going to orchestrate uh, a spine and leaf topology. And we've got two spines and two leaf pairs, leaf one and two. So let's first position the Fabric Composer on where it adds real value and where it sits in the network. So the Fabric Composer is an orchestration tool, not a configuration management tool. And it resides in the data center on a VM. And its primary value is it simplifies the configuration of leaf spine networking topologies providing, by providing a series of workflows that are both interactive and very easy to use. And the emphasis is on ease of use. With these workflows, we can provision a whole new leaf and spine topology or a pod, as we could call it and can de deliver new leaf switches, which can integrate into the existing spinal leaf topology in a matter of minutes. In addition, the Fabric Composer has multiple integrations into other systems that offer re real value. So along with integrations into ILO Amplifier, NetEdit and Odin from HPE, it also has integrations into third-party systems like VMware vSphere, NSXT and Nutanix systems, and it's here we can gain deep insights into the virtual environment and gain visibility all the way from a VM down into the physical top of right switch. And with this visibility, we can automate VLAN provisioning between the virtual environment and the top of right switch is where we can provision a VLAN once at the virtual layer and it's configured automatically and directly on top of a right switch, on the top of right switch, should we wish to have it configured that way. Okay, Steve. Yeah, I get that. So what are the key benefits of a customer for using AFC itself? Well, there are multiple benefits, Kamal. And as you can see, there's a, a list on the, on, the, on the screen there. So the first is speed in delivering service. It is extremely fast and it's designed to be very, very easy to use. And the second point, just equally as important, is the simplicity with reduced risk. It provides a validated configuration every time, time after time. Next, we have this increased visibility of virtual hosts in the virtual network environment and how they interconnect between the virtual and physical fabrics. And because of this, we can then get simplified troubleshooting, a holistic view 
uh, which can accelerate the time that, to resolve networking issues across all the teams in the data center. And that will be, you know, it could be the virtual VMs, application owners, along, as, along with the server admins and the network admins. Right, Steve. So just from that last point about the network admins, server admins and application owners. So to me, that says that Fabric Composer is really aimed at the network specialist or the expert, right? Well, no, it's not, actually. It's not aimed at the network specialist. Of course, they can uh, have access to it. But it is ideal for network administrators that have some networking knowledge but often struggle with the siloed IT provisioning and the complexity that runs with it, which can slow service delivery, to, service delivery times down. Or just IT generalists, um, either server or virtual machine owners, for instance, uh, who don't have deep networking expertise, but they now can provision and manage a fabric operation all from a single VMware console. And it provides a powerful and simplified operating model that, and up until now, has been non-existent. Right. OK, now I get it, Steve. Thanks for clarifying that. So can you tell me what are the prerequisites we need to deploy AFC then? Yeah, so there are some prerequisites. So first of all, the, the, the biggest one is that the Fabric Composer will only is designed to, to orchestrate with Aruba C, the Aruba CX switching portfolio. Today we have um, support for the CX8325 and CX8360 switches, and under the current release of 6.02 on the Fabric Composer. That another important thing it is spinal lead topologies as well. Uh, but we've got more platform support coming down the line in the summer time frame, specifically supporting the 8400 and the 6300 switch series. Uh, the 6300 will be supporting for an out-of-bound management solution. Um, and also we've got additional support coming down for 10.07. Okay, Steve, that's great. So now I've understood a tiny bit more about AFC. Can we sort of have, I can see on the left, you say a demo or some sort of setup. Can we see it in action so we can get a better handle on things? Yeah, certainly. Let's log on to the AFC itself. And then have a look at the dashboard, which should be somewhere here, as I should pull it up. Ah, right, so I just need to log back in. Yeah, so this is uh, the Fabric Composer dashboard. It is how we would see it if we more or less had a default uh, configuration with nothing configured in the Fabric Composer itself. You can see the, the few tiles there. They're all empty. There's nothing populated whatsoever. And we've got a guided set up here on the right. OK, so I guess from that, Steve, the guided setup is going to help us and deploy the AFC or Uber Fabric Composer. Could you take us through the guided setup, please? Yeah, sure. So th th that's exactly it. It is a guided setup. These are the interactive wizards, if you like, that will help us build a spine and leaf fabric from scratch very easy to use, and we work our way down from top to bottom. Okay, great, so what's next? Let's, should we get on with it? Yeah, so yeah, okay, let's go. So um, fabric is the first thing we do, we create a fabric, that's the first step that we need to do. You can see the other sides on there, we'll go back to it. If we can't do them yet because we haven't configured a fabric. So I'm gonna call it DC1 pod one, you can call it anything we like. The description and time zone are optional, so I don't need to put those in. And this just has local significance to the Fabric Composer itself. And then we discover our switches uh, once we've just dis uh, dis uh, defined our fabric. So let's do that. Discover our, our switches. I'm going to cut and paste our switch discovery in. And I need to give it, uh, let's see, uh, an admin account for the switches. If, it's, if there's not an admin account already created on the switch, the composer will create one for you, but I've got a one already configured. We also need to give the composer an admin account as well for audit purposes, and it will use that admin account moving forward after we've 
done the discovery process. So I click apply and that will now go off and discover our switches on uh, these IP addresses. So Steve, as this happens, could you sort of tell us a bit about the switches? What are their initial configured state? Yes, good idea, Kamal. So let's wait for the discovery to finish. Um, let's have a look, see if that's a, a leaf switch. So effectively they are in, first of all, this is how we started um, with that configuration, a default uh, configuration with an IP uh, configured with a default gateway, that gateway that's on the management VRF. Don't have to use a management VRF, but it's best practice. Now we've discovered the switches, you'll see that we've got a AFC admin account applied as part of that discovery. So effectively they're in the default state with an IP address. That's kind of where they were. Okay, great. So the next step that we've got is we then need to assign these switches to the fabric. At the moment they've just been discovered. They're not actually in the fabric. So I'm going to click, whoops, I'm going to click on all the leafs and assign the leaf switches to the fabric. So I've selected four leafs. I select a roll. We've got three rolls that we can choose from, spine leaf or border leaf. Oh, I'm just going to keep, click these as standard leaf switches. Click add and apply. And that will now assign these switches to the fabric. And while it's doing that, it, just, it will go into each interface uh, give it a jumbo frame setting and put it in the no shutdown state. Uh, if it discovers an interface or a piece of config that it wishes to touch that's not in the default state, it won't touch it. So tell me, Steve, uh, the Compose is accessing the switches now, right? And that's doing it through SSH, is that right? Yes, once we've done uh, the, once we've configured the AFC admin account, from that point on, all the interactions to the uh, switches from the composer will be by the API. I just need to allocate these switches into the fabric, the last ones, the spines, and then we are good to go on that step. Great, Steve. So um, what's next? Right, so we've um, created the fabric. We've discovered our switches. We've assigned the switches to the fabric. NTP, NTP and the DNS steps, they just create a uh, global configuration and then applies that configuration globally to the switches that are in the fabric. We don't need to do that. So I'm gonna skip those steps. The next step is to create the VX, VSX configuration between our leaf pairs. And you'll hear about more about VSX in one of the up and coming uh, uh, demos that we have, but for now, we're just gonna configure the VSX via the composer. So first of all, we've got two options. We can automatically generate VSX pairs, or I can just manually configure a VSX pair. I'm gonna go for the auto configure, gen, uh, generate VSX pairs, very, very quick. Uh, the manual configuration gives us a few more options, but I don't need those, so we'll go for that. I'm just gonna call it the name. I'm gonna give it VSX auto. Uh, description is optional. Interswitch links, these are pre-populated values as part of our best practice, that they're all good to go. I'm happy with those. We've got a loopback keep alive interface or keep alive interface, got it defaulting to loopback, which may come in handy if we're short on interfaces between our switch pairs, but best practice to have a point-to-point -point link. And we've got one free, so I'm gonna give it, uh, next step is to give it a, a subnet to use. I'm going to give it a slash 24. We can give it a slash 28, whatever permutation that we want. I'm making it easy for clarity just for a slash 24. It will pull the right addressing out of that pool. Again, the Keep Alive settings are pre-populated and part of the best practice. The options here, again, link delay, best practice, and along with the system MAC address range, it will allocate a system MAC address for each lead pair and this range that's allocated as part of our best practice operations. So that's all good. At the end, I get a summary, which I'm happy with. I select apply and it now goes off and configures 
our VSX pairs. So let's have a quick look at that in the visualization on the networks. Um, we can just move this around a bit. Right, so now we've got our leaf topology configured and it's discovered by LLDP. And over here, we should, if I just click on that, we somehow, if it's a little bit sensitive, it may not come up on my cursor. Uh, it wants to, maybe not. Oh, there it is. It's telling us that um, we've got two leaves and we've, they're configured for VSX. Over here on the left-hand side, I can get more VSX detail. So I'm just going to go into that. And here we're seeing the leaf pairs that the orchestrator is now configured. So I can look at those and think, well, okay, that looks good. I want some more information. I can get that by getting this configuration wheel, wheel and collect some options and just select that. And let's see if I do a refresh, hopefully the switch date will come back up for us. Yeah, here we are. So I can see now by clicking those options, I've got an operational state uh, the primary switch pair status is good. In sync and established. I don't need to pop into the um, CLI to check it. So that's all good. So I've lost my guided setup. I just need to get it back by clicking on this tab here. And we are there. Oh, great, Steve. So it looks really simple. You've just create the VSX uh, configuration through AFC now. So I guess that's done. So we're next from the guided setup into the leaf and spine configuration, I guess. Yes, we go straight in here. And in here, all we're doing is configure our point to point links. So it's, we can see the point to point links from each leaf to each spine. What we'll be doing in this step is configuring those point to point links with this workflow with an appropriate subnet uh, out of a pool that we give it. So let's go straight into that. It's very easy. We've got, again, we've got two options. We've got the manual option and the auto option. The auto option is so much quicker and easier. If you use manual, it works particularly fine, but it's laborious because you've got to configure um, every point to point link. So it's much easier to use the auto option. The manual option may be um, beneficial if you've got a specific link links that you want to address uh, specifically from uh, an IP address range separate from the normal pool that you use. But we use the auto, and I'm just going to call it leaf spine. Uh, I need to give it a, an, a, an address block to use. And I'll give it uh, slash 24 to take its addressing from. And then again, a summary again. I'm going to select apply. And now that is going off and busily configuring has done it already. So you can imagine now how quick that was. It just configured every point to point link with a subnet and the appropriate IP address at either end. And it's done it so quickly. Just, just to clarify a point. So you created um, a slash 31 point to point links here. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So out of that address pool that we use, each uh, point to point link will have a slash 31 best practice uh, subnet allocated to it. And we'll see that in the end when we start looking at the, the configuration. So I guess it's now to the underlay. Next on the Aruba switching story, we're going to continue our journey with the Aruba Fabric Composer and learn how to configure the underlay and the overlay, EVPN and VXLAN, as well as VMware integration. Thank you.